This UFL picks week one edition of the Sports Gaming Podcast. Brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer to peer social betting platform that's US based and available in 40 states. Head to cut.com, that's K U T T.com, and use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pick them for a chance to win 100X in NBA, MLB, NHL, college basketball, and more. Sign up today using promo code SGPN to get a 100% deposit match. We're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays. Player props and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. Hey, this is Derek Stevens. I'm the owner of Circle Las Vegas. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. To the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean Stagging the Money Green with my partner in picks, Ryan Real Money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Uh, we're here. I guess we're talking about football. We are talking United Football League. Join us here, UFL expert, UFL insider, Colby Dant, aka Pick Dundee. What's happening, Colby? Can you can you play that X Files music there? Wow. I am a UF. Unidentified football. Oh, um, observer. League. Your UFO, a unified. Yeah. Uh, that was your big I'm deep, moment. You I'm blew deep. It. I'm deep into. Uh, look, we got football. I mean, I was not big a big fan of the merger. I didn't think it make a lot of sense. Now, why do you think it doesn't Be- make a lot? of Because sense? they still have eight teams. <laughs> so, that they, they but doesn't, uh, doesn't that isn't that what they need? Because like they can't support sixteen teams. Why? Well, why, why, why merge then? Because I think both would have gone out of business, right? I I mean I think the XFL would have, but uh, oh, the wow. USFL had Fox backing it. So but I then feel why like if you're if you're if USFL was in such a strong position, why didn't they just wait it out? I would have done that, mm. but um, I also uh, think they thought there was value to a few things, like the DC Defenders and St. Louis Battlehawks did have a tiny bit of value, I think. And then obviously uh, having Danny Garcia, the face of the league, the first time a leagues had a, w- a woman, you know, commish. And then uh, the rock, obviously the, the highest grossing actor in Hollywood. Do you smell what the rock is cooking I, for the I United States? I use the word league. actor very lightly. Oh, oh he's a great actor. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, for a guy who likes some of the, the all time action greats. Yeah, Colby. Yeah, if but it they're, they're socially aware. If it wasn't for The Rock, we might not have spring football. So, are you, you know, dial back the blasphemy a little I, bit. Colby's probably not even going to like the new Roadhouse. Oh, no. Just, <laughs> did you like the no, new White no, Man no, Can't Jump? I, I hear there's a hip drop did in, you, the, I, in the new uh, I, the did, did you like the new White Man Can't Jump? I was in uh, did Vegas. Did they make a new one? Yeah. Oh, when we were out in Vegas uh, most recently, and uh, my Uber driver was giving me a blow by blow uh, review, blow by of, blow, well, of Roadhouse <laughs> too, and she was incredibly horny for everyone in this Roadhouse remake. She's like, "Oh, um, she Conor McGregor. Uh, there's a scene where he doesn't have any of his clothes on, and he's doing this strut, and oh man." And I'm watching with my girlfriend, and then my girlfriend's like, "You like criminal types, don't you?" And she's like. I like a little bad boy here and there. She, it was all about uh, what a great movie it was, but it was all just how horny wow, she was for okay. Conor McGregor. And she goes, and Jake Gyllenhaal. I go, yeah, I don't know. We'll see if I see it. Oh. <laughs> You're not really helping sell me on it's it. It's a sequel to Brokeback. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, also the Bob Knight. Uh, Bob Knight's uh, head, head under to investigation. Be, I got the best detective be on I the case. I will say, Sean, I like. Uh, if we're watching the, the we're about 20 yeah. minutes into the forensic files and all of a sudden this g- very strange piece of evidence pops up eh, this uh this bobblehead I think has uh, was broken at a different time yes I mm. don't I'm not buying his bullshit here of like <laughs> I just brought I just brought my head over and it hit did, the top did it fall right? off the desk yeah. <laughs> yeah oh okay and uh, now it makes sense oh, no God. but it landed on carpet I mean uh, uh, Different story is a different story 
Go to get in these super fragile uh, bobbleheads. Sean, I mean. Sean in his younger years had the nickname uh, Wally Mitts, mm. and so perhaps mm. we had a little fumble mm. issue. He could fumble. He he did Speaking fumble. Of the, he we, fumble. Um, and we were talking about the Sims earlier, right? which I'll tie it all the way back to Colby trying to say that he's right about something. Uh, Colby was very out on the idea of us doing the Sims. Something yes. we we learned on the latest episode of uh, SGP Stories that will drop uh, at some point over the next. Uh, I don't day. do internet. And so, well, maybe <laughs> you can reflect on your yourself and be like, well, maybe I'm not right all the time with these takes of mine and no, change. That's not very really. rarely, very rarely. Colby, yeah. you were th- again highly recommend uh, gaining access just to watch the moment in the episode where you see Colby's face. As we like are are like we're in it. We're actually gonna do a a, a di- digital March Madness, and Colby just looks just disgusted, as disgusted as he looks right now, talking about how the stupid XFL won. Won what? Well, the won the merger. No, because the USFL kickoff is alive and well. Real, uh, I don't even. I'm not even gonna say USFL kickoff. The football rules kickoff. <laughs> when the sport was created all the way until 2021 or 2020, that kickoff is in charge. Thank God UFL for not going and selling your soul. Like the bitches that are the NFL, mm. like the bitches that were the XFL and let's go. Roger, Roger Goodell does listen to the program. So just watch what you say. Yeah, uh, he's been known to be ru- a ruthless motherfucker. Uh, what I would say, yeah, I mean, look, the, I, I think, you know, you can be unhappy with the kickoff rules in the NFL. It, it's probably an upgrade from what we've seen in the NFL because it's just been touchbacks. Uh, one thing I did just dawn on me, Sean, watching college football will be different than watching pro football. They'll have different kickoffs. That will be noticeable. Oh, that will be a strange, uh, nuanced thing that your brain's going to have to well, absorb and adapt to. It's okay. College football, you know, is the creator of the sport. Hopefully, they will not sell their souls. But I, you, Greg Sankey, might try to. He might oh, try to. They're trying that. to. They're trying to ban prop bets. College football's on thin ice for me. <laughs> Junior, the Sankey. Yeah. I mean the prop bet thing. It's like guys, that's not how it works. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to stop. We people. banned it. It is hilarious. No, you, no one will ever be able to get down on prop bets again. We said no. Yeah. People play fantasy sports for college. Like it's it's over. Stop it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I don't. Col- Colby was uh, he was. It seemed like he was in the middle of saying something nice. Well, no, I was just saying that uh, hopefully college will carry it on the tradition oh. that is so. That is, right. You know what they they've always been at the forefront. Back to of the football. super high level uh, elite football that is the UFL now. Of course, they did listen to us. They did take the XFL and make it the name of a conference, and the USFL and made it the name of a conference. I kind of like that. Yeah. Uh, it, it's great for you, Colby. You can just adopt the entire conference. It's four teams. It's what you like to do. What are your, what are your uh, favorite no. teams, Colby? <laughs> they sprinkled the Roughnecks in there. I, I am currently. A, that, right? I'm, a, I'm a bit of a free agent right now, Sean. Like a normal mm-hmm. spring season, I'm going to take it one season at a time and decide who my team will be around yeah, week three. I think I only have two. And uh, so, all right. Other than other than this uh, being the combination of the XFL and the USFL. Uh, are there any things that, and they have the USFL kickoff, which Colby's already informed us of. Yeah. So in the USFL conference, we got Birmingham Stallions, Houston Roughnecks, who were basically the, the gamblers. Houston Gamblers. Why would you take that name away when every state's legalizing gambling? You <laughs> stupid motherfucker! And gambling is the only thing that's interesting about the UFL. I was uh, a rough. I did have well, roughneck no, kickoff. fever, so yeah. I'm maybe I'm okay with the Roughnecks. Maybe. Memphis Showboats, Michigan Panthers. The problem with the Roughnecks. And look, I I dig I dig them too in 2020, but they were a complete rip off the Oilers. So oh, to wow. me, it's it's a little Roughneck's lame. Roughnecks a cool name. Yeah, yeah. but you, they were going to. St- it's it's just unoriginal. Okay. So hmm. like the gamblers. What is the, what's another Roughneck team? The Houston Oilers. No, but they're the Oilers. But they took the fucking logo. They're in the same city. Uh, there yeah, is a Roughnecks in But CFL. isn't that? A, are you paying homage to one of the great franchises? No, but I'm saying it's just kind of a, it's a little like to me the gamblers had their own fucking oh, I, identity. I like I like if Houston anything gamblers. the Atlanta Falcons stole the gamblers' identity. Oh boy. Um, All right, so can so that's the USFL conference. 
Sean, what about XFL, the XFL? We got Conference? the Arlington Renegades, DC Defenders, San Antonio Brahmas, the St. Louis Battlehawks. Kaka. And so the postseason works. And somehow, no uh, Philadelphia Stars. So once again, R.I.P. Blob. Yeah. I outlived the Blob. They really fucked up. Everyone sure. said Blob was a good uh, uh, mascot. Obviously, he wasn't. He didn't survive the merger. <laughs> Any mascot worth half his salt would survive the merger. Yeah, we did have a great moment on a horseback ride in Costa Rica, but other than that, fuck the Blob. <laughs> and if anyone knows anyone, what were they? USFL or XFL? USFL. USFL. If anyone knows, <laughs> they have more. They have more championships than the Eagles since uh, they it's joined true. the uh, the what? Ana, yeah since the AFL and, and NFL merged. Well, how many? How many cha- stars? Never won one. They won it in the eighties. Oh, yeah. come on, Sean. Yeah, they have more. They have more. They have two. Yes. What years did they win? Eighty four and eighty five. Oh, you don't yeah. know ball. No, I don't, Philadelphia's. I don't. I don't uh, yeah, uh, prized. Yeah. Franchise. Was Vince if anyone knows, <laughs> hey, there you go. There's some USFL stars. I mean, oh, look at look, the, look at how lame <laughs> his uh, t-shirt is. If anyone has the blob costume, please just ate some crabs. Give me inside Sean looks info. So on angry. It. I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna buy the USFL <laughs> mascot. He looks so angry. To Turn it into a horse. pinata. Sean was not into in, in horseback riding <laughs> in that moment. I do. I think I, it was just a weird. Uh, yeah, the sun was in my eye or something. Yeah, a little hungover. You're in Costa Rica. You Probably. like horseback yeah. riding? I don't mind it. Yeah, it's mm. a fun uh, horseback riding on the beach. It's the worst. You don't like horses? Uh, I I'd say riding a horse isn't the most comfortable thing. Mm. Oh, I, I I don't know if it's like but I, you like I got horses. Some, though. I got for, some lower back. Not stuff, for long but times, but I, horses, I enjoy good horses. Riding. Had a lot. Like my, for, uh, for we we talked. We went to this this dude ranch one time, and they like my daughter. Do- my one daughter went on like a twelve mile ride. No fucking way. Yeah. No fucking way. It's too much. Yeah, it's too much horse. Do you use a saddle? Yeah, yeah, okay. no, I'm. I'm, I'm I, well, I don't know. You and you like haven't a, even started talking about the sex yet. So yeah, right. I know. The, <laughs> quick, quick horse, quick, dude ranch, quick horse story. So the, he's one of those guys who will get kids, penetration. Like they, they pro- I woke up my asshole yeah. so sore from horseback riding. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't use a saddle. Uh, they 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 hype up the end of the the week when they're all gonna get to go swimming with their their horses. Okay, and it's like all the adults are having the same thought. Like this sounds disgusting. Like those horses, the second they get in that water are going to shit all over the place. And these kids are just going to be sitting on these fucking horse islands with, with poop surrounding them. Hmm. and kids are excited to do it. Excited he called to do the it. shit poop. The, the mo- moment happens <laughs> and you wouldn't believe it. Uh, the first kid gets out there. There's a couple of horses out there and there's just these massive turds starting to float around. <laughs> and the first kid realizes it. Act. And everyone, it's it's just a horrible thing, and uh, yeah, it's really really funny. I told you so, tout. Uh, when when all the parents were like, yeah, exactly. Well, Ryan. Anyway, uh, I, I'm, it I'm, went over better in my head. I'm pro horse. Uh, hey, well, okay. Friendly reminder: you're listening to SGPN. Of course, uh, we're going hard March Madness. If you haven't checked out the Sweet 16 Picks podcast, check those out. And of course, the college basketball experience: Colby Dan, Pick Dundee, Moneyline Mac, Producer Noah. Unmatched coverage when it comes to college basketball, even a little NIT CBI. So make sure you subscribe to those guys. And of course, we're brought to you by Cut K U T T dot com. Use the promo code SGPN. Get your 10% deposit bonus. All my sweet 16 picks. You can fade them if you dare over on Cut. Uh, the ultimate put your money where your mouth uh, platform is. Uh, so fun to get down over on Cut and custom bets as well. I know J Mark sent a bunch of uh, fun futures over to cut uh, for the UFL. If there's, if there's specific, you know, uh, not a lot of places are probably listing UFL prop bets, but if you have some prop bets that you think uh, you can get some action on, uh, send them over to cut.com. Very easy to request a bet. They're great at getting back to you uh, really quick. And again, uh, since you're going head to head, reduced vig. Uh, really, really enjoy the cut app. A lot of fun over on KUTT dot com. Cut. Um, and of course, also brought to you by Game Time. GameTime dot co. Use the promo code SGPN. Get you twenty dollars uh, credit uh, when you first sign up over on Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Maybe you want to go to some UFL games, uh, major events. MLB Opening Day is happening. Uh, not for the Phillies, they got ranged out. But again, GameTime.co promo code SGPN made for mobile, lower fees, better prices, game time guarantee. They got you covered. Game time.
Love me some game time. Raining out your opening day, kind of a bitch move, right, Colby? Pretty lame. Yep. Rather have play. that. Rather have that dome, right? So you can play rain or well, shine. You can't. You can't play baseball in the rain. Oh boy. We watch college baseball here when they start in February. You don't They're know in the ball. fucking snow. Do you, you see don't Michigan know playing in the snow? You don't know. Ball. Not the uh, not thunder snow though. That, that, that thing. <laughs> well, that's because they have yeah. those handy uh, hat earmuffs. Uh, that they uh, when they get nice and to they can get cold and toasty in their ears. <laughs> All right, Birmingham, who uh, I by by my deep scouting analysis of the roster, it does seem like Birmingham uh, once again has an advantage on on everyone else. Uh, Ten a.m. So and once again, like why does why do they they're doing this again? UFL they're spreading the games out over two days, four time windows. 10 a.m. and smart to start now. You want to complete. You want to compete with uh, the elite eight. You want to. If you uh, have granted, a chance, this yeah. is before the elite eight. The game, the elite eight games, uh, like the second. When do they start? The second game will probably run into the one. I think they're more night games. Hmm. Um, so, so the one o'clock West Coast tip isn't interfering with the elite. Colby, eight? Colby's going to check to see when the elite eight tips, but I believe it will be at least running down when that starts. But who knows? Yeah, I mean, look, they probably should have used Monday. Uh, what, what does Peacock know Monday? about sports? They just do the yeah. Olympics. Yeah, All can't right. let the suits. Jack you know, Collins call uh, has a has a new one man show coming up too that looks pretty electric. Uh, Birmingham, Arlington, um, the stat. Oh, I figured well, I was going to ask you before we started talking games. Were there any other uh, big big overarching changes or things that we should be aware of from a league perspective? No, I in the think, past I think they, that's they've the used thing that they've they used travel there. hubs. They've played at Birmingham. They've done uh, oh, shared they're, a they're plane. They're at home. They're actually at every home. Team, but I think they share a plane still. Every team <laughs> plays at home. Yeah, every team's playing at home home stadiums, but they do. They're 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 in a hub, but they travel to the home stadium. So, so they're like, sharing planes from the hub to the home stadium. As far as I know. They also they are having the um, the three point play after the touchdown. You can get it from the ten yard line. Uh, three points. So it's the two, same rule. Two points uh, if you're from the five yard, and one point for the two yard. So no extra point. Uh, well, no, not kicking extra point. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? Any other wonky rules? Not that I can think of off the top of my head. Hmm. Okay, Colby. He's so mad about everything else. All right. So, and, and as far as uh, Arlington, where are they playing? They're playing at Choctaw stadium. Okay. Which, you know, I like, cause I think every, uh, we, I think if I was in charge of the NFL, you'd be forced to play at least one game on a, at a baseball stadium every, every year. So we have football on a baseball field without a roof. Beautiful. Colby approves. This yep. is one of the teams Colby may be rooting for. Sean. You got a lot of ECU players too. So. Uh, Birmingham laying, uh, which where's Birmingham playing at UAB stadium? Uh, no, I, I mean, am East Carolina fan. Yes. Yeah. The new, the, the same stadium they played at the same stadium that UAB yeah. plays at. Yeah. All right. So Birmingham, the stallions back to back champs, back -to -back champs, three and a half minus one eighty on the money line. Arlington plus one fifty. Forty two 42 is the total. So Birmingham, oh, we're, not, we're not opening with futures, huh? Oh, I, I, I figured at the end. We okay, yeah, at the end. Okay, okay. I mean, yeah, at the end we could we could throw out a future we like. Um, uh, Birmingham running back, the coach. Yeah, I mean everybody running back, yeah. the quarterback, the second quarterback. Matt, Matt Corral is now is an a, NFL like third round pick. Matt yeah, Corral. Matt Corral is a backup quarterback, so that's that just shows you how excited they are for the Jamar well, Smith. Well, and skip uh, Holtz era to continue. Yeah, aren't Jamar they Smith, double? Aren't they going to do the? I'm sure, just because Corral is that system. athletic. Yeah. But Jamar Smith won the championship the first time. Last yeah. year he got injured, was out for the year after like week two, and uh, they still won. But uh, you know, I keyed on this last year. I think I think there's a, a leg up. A Jamar Smith's been with Skip Holtz for like eight years now, maybe even nine. But I, I do just, they also have Adrian Martinez? Yeah, is our data accurate? Because yeah. he strikes me as a, a plus UFL quarterback as well. As well, well, and they have some good. Uh, Birmingham has some good skill players. If you remember Victor Bolden Jr., I feel like he's back with them. Yes, was and really was, good. And they got Slade Bolden from Alabama. Everyone's Isaiah back. Zuber, um, Amari, back. Amari Rogers, who used to play for the Packers. Marlon Williams, who's a De stud. Deion yeah. Kane, another former NFL. Sternberger guy. at the tight end spot, and Shark Dog. Oh, Don't forget yes. Shark Dogs on this team. 
I was I was trying to recall who was that tight end that was just dominant. Sternberger, Jake. yeah. Sternberger, shark dogs on the stallions. That's yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. So I mean, and Scooby. the real the, the real hey, thing to Scooby me right, is, is coaching dog. continuity too. Like Skip Holtz and John Chavez, their DC. It was a long time SEC DC. Um, they're just better than everybody else. Like this is what I mean. Of like last year, I thought the USFL quality was so much better than the XFL, and a lot of it had to do with the XFL did like coaching hires with guys that had never really been a head coach. <laughs> And you watch you watch the Birmingham team. You're like, damn, the Birmingham team is actually like a really good football team. You know, they, I mean? they were ahead. It was yeah. it was just bet on them because they were ahead. And well, some of the so, let's be honest. I mean, look, I love spring football, but some of the games you'd watch, you'd be like, this is kind of a shit fest. And, and like the, Birmingham looks like a really good team. The number yeah. is short yeah. here because. A Arlington was a champion themselves, but Arlington that was a phony championship. B, Arlington was, a, was, was like, a rigged championship. They got into the playoffs at what four and six. Well, and they manipulated the the Luis Perez. Luis trade. Perez. They're they like, oh yeah, it. just take a quarterback. We'll take a guy that's just had one tackle of the year. Um, but they oh. they did end up winning. Bob Stoops obviously is is a good coach, but uh, well, it's a, it's I mean again, it's a two game playoff. They got hot at the right time. Hats off to them. No one's trying hot to at the right time. But they they got Lindsey Scott, who I'm excited about. I mean, they have Holton Aylers too, an ECU product, but I I think he's third on the depth chart. Perez is still there, but I think Lindsey Scott's one to watch in the future. He's we undersized, but he, he he's a baller. Yes. They still have incarnate uh, word. They still Do you a, remember him, Sean? Vaguely, yeah. We, we 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 watched him and said one day we're gonna bet on him in spring football. And uh, and th- don't forget, get a case of Sal Canella. He's there um, <laughs> at the tight end oh, spot. Sal yeah. Canella. He's their only tight end on the roster. So they according run the air to, raid shit. Yeah, according they to, they do, run the uh, air raid shit. Roster. Stoops, you know, obviously Chuck Long. They all go back to the Mike Leach offense. Scott Spurrier's on the staff. Um, There's a Seth Green, which could be confused with Sean Green. J- Javante Payton was a wide receiver for Coach Leach at Mississippi State. They well, got, and they got uh, Marquette King, a former. Uh, oh, electric! If there, was, yes. if there was ever a punter to have some swag, it was uh, Marquette King. Donald Payne at the linebacker spot's a stud too. But hold on, uh, and Vic Beasley. But we forget in Pizzagate, Davion Smith, the running back, is oh, on the yes. team. He was the guy yeah. who got fired for complaining about the meals. Remi- remind us of that story, Colby. Uh, they were serving chicken salad, I think, or was it they were serving pizza and he wanted chicken? Yeah, salad. he wanted something other than pizza. And yeah, he got, yeah, he got, uh, cut for. But it. I thought he he asked for like chicken salad. Right? Uh, yeah, there or was it pizza. It might be. I, I, I don't. It remember seemed like one. the coach overreacted in in the moment. In the moment, it made the coach look really. It was bad. good content though. Yeah. The, Great, content. some of the best content. All around yeah. hustle in the YouTube chat saying XFL was much better. Oh well, boy. I mean, it oh. was in the regard that they they had fans. I mean, the, I can't deny that. But the yeah. actual Home game, stadiums, good. the teams in the games, I think, were a lot better in the USFL. Quick update too: Vic Vic Bolden got cut per uh, J Mark in the chat. Vic so, Bolden, wonder what he did. Uh, yeah, roster. Uh, everyone who's trying to cover the UFL closely just keeps talking about how much of a shit show it is to figure out what the roster. <laughs> it's a. La- it is hilarious. We, like we you're do. following certain people, you're like, oh, he's gonna be the starting quarterback, and then like you, you, you get a source to know he was cut two weeks ago. Really? I didn't see anyone tweet that out. How am I supposed to know this? Yeah, it, it's. I gotta uh, know one of his family members. All right, so both of these teams are pretty put together. Both have good quarterbacks. Uh, we relative. Uh, for the for this league, yes, uh, we haven't discussed it, but I think what we roll out the the unders. Oh yeah. I mean these these totals 42 42 44 41 pretty high. Yeah. I was expecting more like preseason like 30s, right? Now I I honestly wonder though if the kick if the kickoff is a factor to that. What what do you mean? Stop it. Why is mean? that? Like just the where you get the ball is it's a huge difference in the USFL than the XFL. So um that might be part of that reasoning. All right, first week scores last uh, USFL week one uh, 27 23 star showboats. That would have gone over any of those numbers. 10 17 general stallions. That goes under 29 13. That's 42 right on it. Um, and then 15 22 under. So I still like the position. I still yeah, like the position. I think you're, I think you're going to go, if you take all unders, you go three and one. Mm. Unless you get That's a, a bat- strong prediction. You you think you would you would take? Uh, no, I, I think that's a good prediction. Yeah, I think three and one on the all unders. So hopefully we can get some unders listed. And again, uh, uh, I'll hit up uh, the guys over at cut.com. 
to get some uh, UFL totals listed. All right. So then, as far as the game, I, last year the system was simple: just take Birmingham because they're they're ahead. Th- this is this is the, the team worst that matchup has- to to put myself in the it put the test the the trend to the test because the team they're going against has similar advantages. I just think the co- the the yeah. offense for the stallions will still be better and ahead of whatever yeah, 100% the and I renegades think, have I, I yeah but they, the best thing that okay the hardest thing in, in my opinion in these spring leagues is is that you don't have much continuity like the stallions are like most of their rosters continuity you know what i mean like from the renegades have a lot of continuity too and from pra- last year but the, i'm talking like 3 years still on for a lot of these guys in the stallions their starting quarterback is, is a whole You played like 3 games from I, last year i, I know i'm i'm yeah. on birmingham relax <laughs> I'm just saying, Jamar Smith's been on the team two years, so and he was and he was in college with all four all five years with Skip Holtz. We're not worried about the home crowd. <laughs> all those cowboy, those bitter cowboy fans. Yeah, I I I I don't know how you take. Uh, I'm I'm on I'm on the I'm on Birmingham yeah. Birmingham laying the three and a half. But again, I I do like the under here. This feels like a, you know, 21, 17, 21, 13. My thought is you don't you want to be on the road early cuz no one's going to know about it yet. Like they're not going to know the games are happening. The stadium's not going <laughs> to Save be the sold home out. games. Well, yeah. I mean, I do yeah. think there there are a couple teams. I mean, the Battle Hawks I and I think the Defenders the Colby's points did actually have fans come to their stadium to see them yeah, play football, had, which is really had home edge. which is yeah. a real separator in this um league. We maybe have one game on Sunday, but they're playing it at the earliest time window, so who knows. Uh, so we're all on Birmingham. Yeah, let's go. All right, and we're all just Take to be clear. Take that Discord. Just to, be, just to be clear, we're we're all on the under forty two as well. No, yes. I actually take the over. Oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> write that down. Yeah. Make sure you get you document that. Colby's on over forty two. <laughs> I'm yep. on under. Uh, <laughs> One p.m. on the West Coast, the St. Louis Battle Hawks, who Co-co! of all the cities who who need a football team, St. Louis is definitely one of them. They're going against the Michigan Panthers. The Panthers, uh, they're, are they playing at Ford Field? Yeah. Oh wow, Just that is going to seem like an empty stadium, Sean. This is going to be very bad. But you, you might be able to hear the St. Louis Battlehawk cry louder than uh, the Panther. Uh, minus three and a half for the Battlehawks. Another road favorite here. Almost certainly has a lot to do with the starting quarterback for the Battlehawks, who just seems to have a sexy spring football name. Minus three oh five on the money line, Michigan plus two forty five. Forty two is the total. AJ McCarron is the man I'm talking about. And who can forget the story? He's playing in the spring because he wants his kid to see him on the field. Uh gotta respect his that. YouTube's broken. He's also got uh <laughs> behind him, he's got the Dad, Wayne. Can I get my tablet back? He's got the Wayne no. train. <laughs> Watch me play UFL football. Former uh, former handful of former NFL guys. Uh, on the offense here, I, I would assume that's the strength of the team. I'm not. I don't know. I mean, Anthony they, Beck. I mean, yes, I guess that's. If I recall, yeah. they were a little bit of a. Uh, they were in some exciting games, um, a little bit because of how they played, and McCarron was, uh, you know, not 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 quite a superstar, but he certainly was one of the faces of the league. But he also he also had some games uh, off the top of my head. He had some bad turnover games. And you know this Michigan Panthers team, it's tough to really get excited about. But I mean, they did score in the twenties a lot. But is that good or bad? I it's feel good. like it's decent. I mean, they scored fifty three in the uh, final adding against they, Terrell. Basically, Buckley. they DC had their number and they they held their own versus everyone else. Um, uh, Michigan sucked too, right? Like that. Michigan, Michigan was, was like a grind, bad. a grinded out team. Who? Uh, we need a quick update. So St. Louis, who's the co- back? Is still the coach. You don't respect him. Yeah, feel like he's a bit of a donkey. But AJ McCarron, you, the offense, it feels like to me one of the stronger units out there. Michigan last time around, they were a disgusting. But uh, they got Brian Lewerke, who was in the, the uh, nice lawn chair in the NFL for a few years. You bring that lawn chair. I mean, to, you want to uh, you want to talk about unders? Listen to some of these games at Ford Field for the Panthers, who had four home games in a row: thirteen to twenty-eight, ten to twenty-nine, seven to twenty-three, thirteen to twenty-seven. 
I mean, they didn't really put up many points, but also they did play decent enough defense. Is the counter? I don't. Yeah, they were a solid defensive unit that they they didn't do much on offense. And when I look at their roster offensively, uh, is that Puka's brother, Samson Nakua? Uh, I I don't I don't know any. Let me talk to Samson. I'll say this: he's a beast at BYU. Yeah. Oh, so maybe he is related. No, he re- he really oh, is. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> thought you're being sarcastic. No, no. I I, being, it's a, it's a like, very yeah. rare name. Yeah. I, I I mean I don't know enough about the like. I can this, tell you this, this offensive roster. If it's Lewerke, which I know he's not even listed on this, but they just tweeted out that it was Lewerke on there. Wait, so our depth chart that we that we've been tracking all off <laughs> does doesn't have, even have the start. Uh, well, Lewerke was on the Patriots for a while, right? I mean, that okay. he's a lawn chair, but it a lot of. Uh, Michigan's problems a year ago was just throwing a pass. And to me, one of the things with the merger, they got a lot of good wideouts. Like, okay, they have Nakua, they have Desmond Patton, former Mike Leach wideout. To me, that I mean, they had Trey Quinn and Devin Ross last year, but they got Devin Gray from the Philadelphia Stars. They got Jordan Swell or Jordan Sewell from the Philadelphia Stars. Uh, And their receivers are are much in much better shape. And also Derek Deese, the former San Jose State Spartan tight end. his dad was a uh, Sean, world is, champion in the this? NFL. Um, what is this? But remember Derek Deese? <laughs> but hold on, hold on, Colby. I, I apologize to break into this riveting UFL <laughs> coverage. But there, there's someone in the chat. Contavious who, Johnson saying, "Anyone else think Kramer gives off Biachi bottom vibes?" <laughs> Sean seems like a dude who goes on Craigslist to get topped by a muscular dude. Wow, interesting take. Um, maybe you're projecting here a little, Contavious. <laughs> what do you think? He, he's uh he's on the down low. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of lot I've, lear- of, I've learned about that underground railroad. Uh, is some- there anything straighter than hosting a UFL football <laughs> podcast? Like, what are you talking? Hey. About? I mean, I got I got nothing against gay dudes, but name me one gay dude who is going to be grinding out UFL podcasts. It just doesn't seem stuff that gay guys are interested in. Yeah, maybe I'm no, wrong. This is maybe brutal. there's maybe there's a super gay dude who loves UFL football. Uh, we should have him on the show. You can't have opening weekend on Rose Blossom <laughs> Saturday. Shout out to Chris Brady, of, of course, saying don't forget to get in those uh, Creighton Zags money Ooh, line parlays. Good call. Good call. Yes, sir. Sean and I just we just dipped in a little bit. I did um, get a little uh, Zags uh, future with Kramer there. All right, uh, so uh, that ba- is <laughs> that, oh, no nothing. Okay. I uh, I think wait is this the is this the right spread? Battle Hawks lane three and a half. I thought it was six. Yeah, could could have six, been a six. And a half. Yeah. Oh, okay. Please, uh, yeah. By all means, fix it. Okay. <laughs> I was just asking Ryan. Don't need to be so defensive. Uh, you biachi <laughs> bottom. Uh, I think six and a half is too much delay for this Battle Hawks team. I don't like Michigan uh, as a team and a, as an offense, but they've shown at home. They're able to ugly up these games. Their defense is usually pretty good. It's a big I, number. Yeah, it's just a lot to lay on the road. I really like. I mean, I'm playing all the unders, but I really like this under in particular. I just don't know any this Battlehawks team warrants being six and a half point road favorites. That to me is a little crazy. And Cole Hickatini is a good tight end too. Um, hmm. uh, sorry, I just saw that he was there. Um, I'm with you. I think the under is Who? the play here. And who's, I, who's the coach of the Panthers? Uh, Mike Nolan. Former 49ers head coach and Redskins defensive coordinator and Giants defensive coordinator. That would be another yeah. system is to just take the points. Or like well, I'm taking the points too. I mean, I, I think I think you take Michigan here. Michigan, look, last year Frank Ginder, their linebackers a beast, and the defense was stingy. They have another Nakua on the on the in the secondary. I, I think you just pay and the money line too. Like Yeah, no, I think the money line's live. I don't buy into this yeah, Anthony right. Beck bullshit. You yeah, know what I mean? If you look at the Battle Hawks, uh very interesting team at home, but you know, they only topped uh, 30 points once, and it was in that crazy game against the Guardians where they put up 53 to 28. So, for a team that hasn't didn't get above 30 points all last season, you're having them lay six and a half. That's crazy. Remember last year at the end of the XFL season when I was uh, in Colombia and I had them put, putting the games on the TV in the middle of. I don't year. remember oh, that. Wow. <laughs> I, there, there was a moment where we thought Colby was going to ignite some sort of uh, up, upheaval. Uh, trying to get soccer taken off so I, they could watch I a got, Mary. I was at two two different places. One was like a house party, but the other Imagine one was an establishment where I got XFL games on or or USFL. One that, of the two. 
Um, that would be the equivalent yeah. of you coming into this office on an NFL Sunday and, and trying to get soccer on God's eye. But this year, I think, because the, the NFL does. That's I don't insane. know if you know that. That's insane. Um, uh, under forty-two as well for me. Um, Colby, you gotta you gotta play on the total here. Under, under. Oh, under. interesting. Yeah. So now we're you're... all on the Michigan Panthers plus six and oh, a half at oh, home, no. and we're all on the under. Let's go. All right. What could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? Hey, have you guys signed up over on underdogfantasy.com yet? Now, what are you waiting for? Uh, perfect time to get in on some best ball drafts as well. Uh, they already got those uh, rolled out for the 2024 NFL season. NFL, obviously, greatest league in the nation. Underdogfantasy.com, you get the 100% deposit match up to $100. You got the pickums, those are so fun. Uh, we gave out one on yesterday's show. Maybe we give out another one. Colby. Uh, what do you like maybe for the Friday slate uh, here at college basketball? I feel like we gave out Thursday plays um, on yesterday's show. So what do we like here for the Friday college basketball slate? Um, well, did we give out Thursday? I no, we gave, we out, gave Friday. out Friday. Yeah. Actually. Oh, we did. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can give out another yeah, we Friday. Can, we can do more. We can go. Uh, you want to do something in uh, Duke Houston? That's an easy under. Um. It's a lower. What do we got yeah, there? Lower, what, what's what what's the uh, the ultimate uh, pussy? What's his uh, Filipowski? Yeah. Oh yeah. Fourteen and a half points. Mm. What's what's his rebounding? I like the PRA. That's what we faded 27. before. Twenty seven and a half points, rebounds, and assists for Kyle Filipowski. All right. Let's lower. Go, let's go lower. All right. Lock that in for lower. Who do we like as a higher? Anyone on Houston? We want to take a higher Sears. on. L. J. Cryer, maybe. What about the Jamal Shed? See, the problem oh, with Houston shed, is they yeah. have different guys that kind of can, can light it yeah, up. Yeah, they are pretty uh, balanced. Um, what about the likes of Dalton Connect for Tennessee? Oh, he's a stud for them. Bail- and and Craig- well, we're fading Rick Barnes. That, that to uh, me but he, I know, but he still scores. No, no, no. I'll no, take no, the no, I'll no. take the higher twenty no, and a half. No, no, no. no, no Kramer, no, no, no. we signing off on Dalton Connect. I mean, whatever. This Creighton's, is a horrible. Play. Creighton's defense isn't great. All right, so higher Dalton Connect twenty and a half this points. Is this is this lower is. Kyle Filipowski twenty seven and a half points, rebounds, and assists. And of course, you can get that over on UnderdogFantasy.com. Promo code SGP and get that hundred percent deposit match up to one hundred dollars. And of course, we're also brought to you by Unified Healing. Ooh, love, uh, love feeling my best. And again, feeling my best. Part of it is, uh, you know, feeling healthy. Uh, we're top notch athlete, top notch podcaster. I, I'd like to think I'm a, you know, you go both ways when it comes to podcasting and uh, athletics. Uh, you know, we're talking about these UFL guys. Obviously, they've had a ton of ton of time to recover, but Sweet 16 to the Elite Eight, that's quick turnaround. You're gonna need to be your best when it comes to mental and physical well-being. Unified Healing helps you with their super innovative global network of wellness centers powered by energy enhancement system or EE system. If you haven't heard of EE system yet, you'll want to listen up. This technology promotes wellness, deep relaxation, purification, and rejuvenation. Whether you're here in LA or hundreds of other locations across the globe, access to a center is easy and affordable. Uh, again, all you got to do is uh, head over to unifiedhealing.com to learn more and find a center near you. That's U N I F Y D healing.com. Check them out today. No material testimonies on Unified Healing website are intended to be viewed as medical advice or a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before undertaking a new healthcare regimen, including EE system. Kramer? Sunday. So, again, now uh, we've watched two games. Now we, we wait until Sunday. Uh, this will not be in any sort of. Actually, I don't know what time the Elite Eight. Maybe they're. This maybe is a really horrible time to start. DC, San Antonio. San Antonio is the uh, the true long shot in the league this year. DC laying six, minus two eighty on the money line. Brahma's plus two forty five. Forty four is the total. Nine a.m. kick on the West Coast. DC, uh, staunch defense, amazing beer snake. Greg Williams, my uh, boy. Run, run the damn ball. Um, Bounties. No, but they, you know what? Unfortunately, they lost their uh, star running back for the season. Torres ACL. Abram Smith, the former Baylor mm. linebacker, 
They do have Puka Williams, Cameron Former Harris. Head. Yeah, I mean those. Th- they got some. Uh, they got some beef. I mean, this there. is another one that was a team that was really impressive to Kiki, me. Kiki Q- Q- QT and uh, a former defenders, NFL draft pick. Defenders dominated and then just uh, kind of blew it there at the end. Well, I mean, they they had they the co- system rigged. They against covered them, yeah. uh, ATS seven of their la- of their ten regular season games in 2023. Meanwhile, Brahma's on the other side lost seven uh, of their ten games in the 2020. Uh, and Three season. Chase Garbers was named the starting quarterback over Dorm- Storm in Dormandy Beach there. Um But they did they did play once uh, last year, April twenty twenty three. Def- defenders owning a historic a uh, one to zero edge all time in this matchup. Um they have Joe Flacco's brother, backup quarterback Tom Flacco. Mm. Former Towson Tiger. Um, Is that a positive or a negative? Well, you gotta decide that, buddy. Um, they're well, running wait, the wait. air raid there. You brought it up. Air raid is that a positive or a negative? I I I just like Greg Williams' chances. Now the 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 line is what you said six. Well, and they also brought back. Um, he was the coach of the Roughnecks in twenty twenty three. Wade Phillips, uh, you know, a big part of the Brahma's uh, issue last year was coaching. Oh, I think. big time. Heinz Ward sucked. <laughs> he was not a good yeah. head coach. He had no idea what to do. So I'm saying they were gimmicky last year. Like they were just like, oh, let's just put a big name there. So you don't think it's a massive upgrade to have w- uh, Wade Phillips? It is. Uh, I mean, he's a yeah, way he better coach. And, he yeah. was seven and three with the Roughnecks um, last year. T- I mean, I think you got to take the points because I, I think DC's probably going to win the game, but it's a lot of points in these leagues. Way too many yeah. points. Yeah, especially the way DC played football last year. I well, mean, they, DC lost their their like thousand yard running back. They you know, yeah, like, the, but there they there was nothing explosive happening with DC. I don't that. even know if he ran for a thousand because the season was so short. But he was their best, like one of the best running backs in the league. DC is yeah. The, I mean, you look at margin of victory. It was a lot of close wins, including against the Brahmas. They only won by one. They beat the Renegades by two in overtime. They beat the Sea Dragons by one. They lost by one. Um, like they had, especially in the second half of the season, it was all close games. Well, why is the total so high here at forty four? Is it is it because the, the defenders can put up some points? Is there is their theory? I also think their theory is that AJ Smith running that he's June Jones's protege running the offense for San Antonio uh, with Garbers and those wideouts. But I I'm sorry, Greg Williams will. I think their defense will be able to. Who's the quarterback them. for DC? It's uh, it's it's uh, what's his name? Uh, Jordan Tamo. Oh, who's who's had success? They also have the DeAndre Francois. Wow. Okay. And so they they have a pretty nice quarterback room. And Jalen McClendon. They do have a good quarterback room. But we're we're getting air raid on the other side. Yeah. San Antonio. I'll take the points. This is the one that maybe goes over. I can I'm see not this messing. Going I'm not messing with an over. No, no. I'm taking under. Okay. Francois was on the Generals, right? Yes. Yeah. Am I thinking someone else? No, that was him on the generals. Yeah. My sweet, sweet generals. May they rest in peace and sleep well. Colby, so you're on the under as well. I will take the over on on this one. And uh, I will also take, uh, I think you got to take the points. Yeah. yeah. I think DC's going to win the game, but I think. I think Wade Phillips will have this team close enough. You should not have uh, these types of money lines on this type of football. That would be my advice to the Bucks. Yeah, they're gonna regret one of these money lines. Uh, all right, last game noon on the West Coast. Uh, what I was saying, Sean, by the way, was that you said the, that they were gonna go three and one to the under. This might be the one that goes over. Is is all hmm. I was pointing out, matchup wise. Uh, Memphis, Houston, the Showboats head to Houston on the same plane. I, Colby reassures us they're sharing planes, so sharing that, meals. Some say oh, sharing meals, airplane. Food <laughs> they have like the uh, <laughs> uh, one plate of spaghetti they share. And yeah. then the two, the two <laughs> like starting quarterbacks, going down the, the, the noodle, the, 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 <laughs> noodle the lady, lady in the trip <laughs> sloppy Joe's uh, noon on the West coast. Uh, the showboats are catching a point here on the road. I think I wrote this down wrong. Uh, plus one hundred on the money line, minus one twenty for the Roughnecks. Forty-one is the total. There's a lock. All in on the show. Oh, wait. Here. I I, yeah. I did it. I read it all backwards. She, Memphis is favored. I had the money line right. Minus one twenty on the money line. One hundred coming back for the rough. So Roughnecks a home dog. So we have all four home dogs. Opening week in the. My power rating has home field advantage is negative two and a half. 
My theory They're playing is, this at Rice Stadium, which is a fucking classic stadium. You want they, they to hosted be, many Super Bowls there. You want your home yeah. games later so people understand that it's happening. President you Kennedy want to be on the road. These about, guys these guys need a vacation from their real jobs. Uh it's a distraction to be at home. You have to sleep in your own bed with your dumb family. I think they wow. like going on a vacation. Uh, vacation. I I, I love the hub. location. They're already at a hub. Where's yeah. the hub, Colby? Isn't it Arlington or Ar- Fort Worth or yeah, right, I'm somewhere gonna... somewhere there in Texas? Um, they, you think they brought their wives and kids to the hub? Well, you know how those UFL guys go. They got a they got a girl in every uh, centralized hub, every Applebee's. <laughs> Um, oh man, there's probably some UFL groupies out there. If you're a UFL groupie, uh, please slide in our DMs at Gambling Podcast. Oh yeah, love to hear your hustle. Um, guys, Memphis is gonna fuck them up. Yeah, like I think Memphis. Uh, and I know we got to get to our future segment, but from a roster standpoint, the only problem is is this coach John D. Filippo, which I, I I'm a skeptic on the NFL coaches when they come to these levels. But we'll see how he does. Carnell Lake did a good job as a defense coordinator a year ago. Uh, they have the old Syracuse coach Paul Pasqualani uh, as the linebackers coach. I think that's a good d- defense that they'll have. It's it's gonna be well Flip coached. Was, uh, I mean, he was he was there in 2017 as the Eagles quarterback coach when they won the Super Bowl. So he uh, go. he got the best out of Carson like Wentz. Him. He turned uh, Nick Foles into a Super Bowl winning quarterback. I, I think there's a lot to like about. The, I mean, this roster is is loaded too. Like Case Cook is is a is you a, got Cook. He's a very good quarterback in the spring leagues. He's per he's like the perfect um springling quarterback. Dude, and then the running back room, like Trey Williams and Darius Victor both coming, coming Victor, from the yeah. generals. And then uh, this kid Titus Swen from Wyoming. Uh he was a beast at, at, at Wyoming with Craig Bowl. I like the running back room, the receiving room too. I mean, they got your boy Vinny Papali Jr. Um Really, uh, Sage Surratt at the tight end spot. I, some of their other wideouts. Jonathan Adams was a beast for the Breakers a year ago. Rashard Davis, the old JMU wideout. Like they have a a talented team. Overton was on the Stars last year. Um, I, I think this is one of the better rosters in the league. We'll see what D, D, Fl- D Filippo can do with this. He coached New Orleans last time. Right? He did, and it wasn't super impressive. Well, they were seven and three. I understand they made that, the but playoffs. like to me, you watch it and you're just like. I thought they were more talented than their results, but they made the playoffs. True, they they were good in spite of that. Maybe perhaps he learned from it. I I tell you, I like the defensive side of the ball. Carnell Lake and P- P- Pascalani, I think. Are Do you two. know where he went to college? Do you flip? Oh no, JMU. Oh shit. Mm-hmm. I, I like from it. Youngstown. Coach mm. Coach, uh, what do they call that city? Coach Town USA. Is that Coach Town uh, USA? A bunch of fucking head, a bunch of football coaches from Youngstown, Ohio. The stoops. You were saying, Sean? The stoops. No, I, I like uh, I like Flip. I like the spot. I like the roster. I'm all over Memphis here, laying the point. This guy's a grinder. He coached at Fordham, Notre Dame, Columbia, the Giants, the Raiders, the Jets, San Jose State, the Raiders, the Browns, the Eagles, the Vikings, the Jags, the Bears, the Breakers, and now the Showboats. No, I'm I'm with for you. the love of the game. This guy knows. Ball. I mean, any any of these coaches really go through. I mean, unless they were like the XFL coaches last year, I feel like a lot of them just to, go through the grind. Who's the Houston quarterback? Uh, it is what the kid from Tennessee, Guantanamo oh, Bay. Oh yeah, we don't like him. He's. It might be Reed Sinnott though. I heard what? that. You know, but either way, yeah, let's fade them because no, thank you. C.J. That's... Johnson was a coach that I was a skeptic of too. So this was another guy that I don't know. He was all right. And back he was Tulane's old head coach, struggled at Tulane. Um, they have Mark Thompson. J Mark, refresh my memory. Did he he's injured though, right? Mark, I feel like Mark Thompson got injured. Um in the chat, if you can, J Mark, remind us if that was if I have everything there. Um, but uh if not, they have TJ Pledger, who I think is a solid back out of Utah. Um, but yeah, I think I think Memphis's roster is just way more talented than than Houston's. All right, Kramer, what are you doing here? Oh no, I, I'm with you. Yeah, I liked. I I thought, um, you know, the average person barely doing the research to figure out that D. Filippo coached a seven and three USFL team last season. Game to deci- game time decision for Mark Thompson, which obviously is a huge, pl- like one of the best players in this league. Check your DFS lineups for that running back. But he, I mean, he's to, to just because not everyone's like, memorized. I always the compare him to a- Adrian Peterson. You're of, talking of the about spring the Houston Roughneck running back. 
who yes. will be one of the highest priced guys in DFS. Yes. If, yes. If you're out in those streets, good luck. Uh, shout out to J Mark. He did send me a couple of lineups just in case I was feeling itchy. Uh, I futures. I'm, we talking champion. Well, I think we have to because it's this. I think the same PSA of uh, exists. <laughs> Excuse me. The they've done this thing where three of the top four odds are from one division. <laughs> I love or it. Or conference. Because it, now correct me if I'm wrong, they're running back the same playoff format where two teams from each conference get into the playoffs, right? Uh yes, I believe so. So what you gotta do is you take the I mean, you could take all four, like take the bottom two in each conference. Or take three in I mean I don't know. What do you, what do you, what are we doing here? Carl? I mean, the first thing you have to do is touch, take the stallions at plus 300. You're getting good value on the team. That's been, yeah. Why are they not in shorter odds? Yeah. They, they're, they've been ahead of everyone in, in the other seasons. Yeah. We've it, seen once again, already. even from stability, like I said earlier, like most of their roster, it's not like all these other teams where they're just bringing in players left and right. A lot of the stallions roster is the same. I think that that's a benefit in these crazy leagues. Um, but to me, I, I hit on Memphis. I think Memphis's roster is really good, so I think it's worth a stab at plus eight hundred on on the showboats. Really, from the XFL division, the or the XFL conference, the only one that really makes a lot of sense to me is Arlington. What's their price? Five fifty. Well, so so Arlington, um, St. Louis, and DC are all in the same division. Yeah. Three to one plus three eighty. I, I kind of like DC's angle, but before the running back, uh, like running backs, uh, Avery Smith, they got to have someone fill that void. Meanwhile, Birmingham all by themselves, three hundred with plus six fifty roughnecks, eight hundred showboats. I think Memphis is. is I think you got to take uh, yeah. you got to take a shot on the Brahmas, fourteen to one. I mean, it's crazy because I don't think anyone in that XFL division is so good that they deserve to run away with it. And again. We and never you can have make an the idea. playoffs. Yeah. You can make the playoffs at four and six. Give me the Brahmas fourteen to one, and I guess I'll take Stallions third three to one. I yeah. Uh, and then what we'll do is the, the if a team starts out zero and two, zero and three, and that conference sucks, uh, I'm going to be hammering them because that that's how we did it last time. I uh, I mean you have to take the Stallions. So Colby's taking the Stallions at at three to one. What else you got, Colby? Give me Memphis plus eight hundred, and give me Arlington plus five fifty. Those all right? Are I want those one side of the other conference? I want mm -hmm. one side of the other conference, which is uh, Kramer. What Arlington. are you doing? Well, I, I I think I have to bet on Birmingham. The question is, are any of the other teams long enough odds to have a chance? Now, what I would say is when I when I look at all the stadiums and I see the sizes. I see a lot of larger stadiums. Arlington plays in front of twenty five thousand. DC in front of twenty thousand. I think those environments could actually be interesting. Ch ch change mine to DC. I want to. I want to root for. Could DC. San Antonio? Get rid of Arlington. I want. I want to root for. Could DC. San Antonio fill up the sixty four thousand person? No, but it, it, they could still. You know, in, in one of those filthy domes, you could can still. Now wait, hold know. on. Let's let's hear this out. What if we did? All right, so San Antonio's fourteen to one. All right. Then you got uh, the Renegades. Did someone confirm in the chat that we're actually the rules are correct? Top two teams from each division. Renegades plus five fifty. So what are you trying to do? You trying to corner the market here, Sean? <laughs> I'm thinking. What is are you there, trying, is what are you there trying to calculate? Is there value in playing every XFL s team in the conference to win it all? Oh, why would no? No, there wouldn't be. Why not? Because they're all short. No, the Arlington's the long uh, XFL is the long one. Why is Arlington that far Brahma's back? Is, Brahma's they just is formed the XFL. Arlington is uh, f plus five fifty. Uh, San Antonio's fourteen to one. Yeah, the no, no, exactly. Yeah, the t three of the top four are in that division: St. Louis, DC, and Arlington, and then they have San Antonio. Am I? What am I? What am I re reading wrong? Oh, I guess yeah, you're right. Because I was thinking it would be um, it's the other way around, but I don't think I like it as much because I like Birmingham. Factory, yeah, and, and sure, maybe we bet on maybe we get lucky with the second team. You take Birmingham because remember the other thing is Birmingham plays the uh, a team from the other division, 
So the team you're getting, the other XFL team, that's actually the way that. You All right, so Birmingham go. and uh, the uh, San Antonio Brahmas. Those are my two places. Kramer, what are you doing? Yeah, I think that's that's probably the right way to to do it. Is I'm I'm with you. I think you take Birmingham. Wait, so but let's think about this for a second. If we so if we took Bir- Birmingham, lock that in three to one. If we play another XFL team, they wouldn't play Birmingham in the first round, so we could still potentially get them into the championship. Is there a team in the bottom? Is Michigan or Memphis interesting? In, in Memphis, I think has yeah. In my so opinion, Memphis, they have like the second or third best roster. Is that the move then? Yeah. So then Birmingham, Memphis as a small hedge, and so I'll go full unit Birmingham, half unit Memphis, half unit San Antonio. Yeah. We, we unlocked it. All right. Uh, now, now we got winners. Time for our lock and our dog. Uh, Kramer, what are you doing? Lock and dog, of course, brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets. Head over to hofbets.com, download the Hall of Fame Bets app, use the promo code SGPN, get you signed up. Uh, 50% off your first month over at Hall of Fame Bets. Shout out to producer Josh. Josh just been on a heater. Um, with these Hall of Fame bets, player props again, great research makes it super easy to put together. Head over to hofbets.com, use the promo code SGPN, or download the Hall oh. of Fame bets app. Sorry, I was just shocked that I was able to put down a two hundred dollar bet on the UFF. UFF. Oh my god! On my lock, Birmingham minus the three and a half uh, for the dog. Man, I, w- one of these dogs is gonna hit. Let's just let's just take a flyer on this San Antonio team. Take them on the money line. There we go. Yeah, I did it. Uh, I'm with you on San Antonio. I got a promise future of 14 to one. So lock them, uh, put them down as the dog on the money line. And for my lock, the showboats. Oh, Memphis laying a point against the Roughnecks, who aren't the Roughnecks. They're actually the gamblers. I see some people saying we need help with our XFL picks. I want to remind people that mean? that Sean only had one losing week the entire. So it was thir- what twelve weeks yes. last year. Sean only had one losing week. Oh, right. I only had three. You only had three, I Ryan. You were dominant. I could have had all losing weeks. Like I give a shit <laughs> what this person's saying about me. That's what I, we're pretty sharp. I feel like who's talking shit? Is it J Mark? No, I don't come know. at me. Um, I was twenty four and fifteen last year in the XFL, including seventy three percent on my locks. And I we were all case. over that future when that when that fake trade happened. Yep. When that fake trade happened, we go, we got to load up on Arlington. This doesn't make any sense. Hmm. Uh, the lock is uh, for sure. You know, it's going to be Memphis minus one. Let's go. Yeah, I actually, I'm going to unload some money on this. Uh, I, I'm able to get down on, uh, I'm seeing Memphis plus twos out there. Oh, wow. All right. The dog is the Michigan Panthers. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't, eh. do we want to do a, a Michigan Panthers Brahma's money line parlay. No. I'm in. All right, Colby's in. Yeah. Fucking ch- child over here. Michigan San Antonio Brahma's no, on the I'll- money line parlay. Hey, this is fun. Uh mm-hmm. good to shake off the old uh spring football legs. Of course, make sure you subscribe to the UFL gambling podcast. Available everywhere, right, Ryan? Uh ev- everywhere, hopefully. Everywhere that a UFL fan would be. Okay. Check out the UFL. Uh, I mean, basically, if you were subscribing to the XFL show, it's been rebranded to the UFL show. How fun! If you are a USFL uh, listener, uh, we're gonna nuke that feed soon. So f- no. find that. Col- Colby wants to keep it in the garage. No, I've, been in, the I've been in talks to buy the USFL. We'll, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, maybe we'll uh, we'll vacuum seal it or something. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Find the UFL feed. Uh, join the United. Uh, Colby, United CJ, Airlines, J Mark. It's going to be electric <laughs> all season. You like United Airlines? You, you, is that is that something you? Uh, no, with? I don't. I don't know. I'll bleep out United. No, 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 no. no, no. Yeah, we don't. Isn't that like a Make a Wish Foundation too? United. No, uh, you, you just gotta you gotta pull the ripcord. We'll, you will use the plane analogy. I'll pull Colby's parachute. I still hey. want to know what happened to that bobblehead. Uh, merch madness, 15% off everything, including our new zebra print uh, sweatpants, <laughs> the most comfortable sweatpants around. Those things are awesome. 
I uh, was rocking my pair uh, last night on the stream. Again, check out the uh, Sweet 16 College Basketball Picks podcast. MLB is back. Check out the MLB Gambling podcast, MLB mm. Picks page. You know what I want you guys to do this weekend? Get yourself, pour yourself a tall glass of lemonade, sit back, and enjoy kick returns the way they should be. I'll do that. Yeah, not that bullshit. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, second money green. He's Ryan. If I wake up in time to catch these games, Kramer, let it ride.